Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And so far in EC 3400 analog electronics, we haven't really talked about frequency dependent effects. And this week we'll start looking at these kind of effects. And as an introduction to that, I would like to review a few facts about first order frequency responses. So I'm writing this as big H LPS for a low pass filter. And this is a transfer function, also known as a system function. It's a function of a Laplace domain variable S. If you're not familiar with this kind of approach, don't worry about it. You can just think of S as a shorthand for J omega. And we're going to plug J omega into here for S, and that will give us the frequency response of the system. And this is associated with plugging in J omega for S in a Laplace transform in order to get the associated Fourier transform. And you can learn more about these kinds of things in my ECE 3084 signals and systems class. We have a transfer function consisting of a single pole. KDC is actually the gain of the filter at a frequency of zero, but I've just given that to you as a statement and you should expect me to prove it, which I will in a little bit. So this omega that we're going to plug in here, when we plug in J omega, that's in terms of radians per second. If you want to get that in terms of a frequency in Hertz, you need to divide by two pi. So omega P represents a pole frequency, and we have a time constant tau P, that's the reciprocal of that pole frequency. And if you wanted to express the pole frequency in radians per second in terms of a pole frequency expressed in hertz, you would multiply the expression in hertz by 2 pi. So in his notes, Marshall Leach usually writes the transfer function like this, and sometimes he'll write it like this by substituting in 1 over omega p for tp. I typically like to multiply the numerator and the denominator here by omega p in order to write omega p over s plus omega p. Now, the actual pole location is at s equal minus omega p. If you take minus omega p and plug it in for s, then the denominator goes to zero and the transfer function blows up. And that's the definition of a pole. So if we compute the frequency response at zero by plugging in j omega for s and then evaluating that at omega equals zero, this s spot winds up going away and then the remaining omega p's cancel, and you get KDC. So this was properly named. Now, what if we let omega go to infinity? I'll quite often just stick infinity in here in the argument. Technically, that means take the function of omega and take the limit as omega goes to infinity. And if we plug in j omega for s and let omega go to infinity, eventually the omega going to infinity is going to swamp this constant omega p term, and you have a constant over something going to infinity, so that goes to zero. So it makes sense that you would call this a low-pass filter. Now, what is the frequency response at the pole frequency? So if we plug in omega p for omega, we wind up with a bunch of omega p's canceling, and we wind up with kdc over j plus 1. And if I take this complex number in rectangular form and convert it to polar coordinates, we wind up with KDC over square root of 2 times a phase term that's basically minus 45 degrees. So if I look at the magnitude squared of the frequency response evaluated at the pole frequency, notice that I'm taking this KDC magnitude squared and I'm dividing it by 2. So this is also called the half power point. So we quite often plot the magnitude of the frequency response on a log-log plot called a Bode plot. And here I'm doing something a little bit unusual, which is although the plot itself is on a log-log scale, I'm going to label things on the vertical axis with their linear units. So I'm not going to write 10 log base 10 KDC dB or whatever. So in drawing a Bode plot by hand, you usually make some straight line segments, and then you make a little smooth curve that sort of fills in the spots around where the segments meet up. 
and I've included a plot of the phase response on the right here, but that's not too important right now. We'll come back to this later when we talk about stability. So what about a high pass filter? So we have K infinity here, and that's going to be what the frequency response goes to as omega goes to infinity. And here we actually now have a zero sitting at the origin in addition to this pole at minus omega p. So zeros are where the numerator is zero and poles are where the denominator is zero. And if you would like to learn more about poles and zeros, you can check out this lecture from my ECE 3084 Signals and Systems class. All right, so plugging in one over omega p for tau p here is how Marshall Leach usually writes it. I usually like to multiply the numerator and the denominator by omega p and write it like this. And this makes it clear that the pole is sitting at minus omega p. All right, so let's look at the extremes. If we plug in zero, well, obviously we get zero here and we get zero here. And so you wind up with zero. And on the other hand, if we let omega go to infinity after plugging in j omega, we wind up with this omega in the numerator going to infinity, the omega in the denominator going to infinity, and essentially the omega p gets swamped out. So you have something like j omega over j omega, and the j's cancel. So you have something like omega over omega, and you wind up with just this k infinity left. Once again, if you ask the question, what is the frequency response at omega p? Well, you wind up with this quantity here. So you have that minus 45 degree phase shift and you have this division by the square root of two. So once again, we would refer to omega p as the half power point. And we could draw this kind of figure for a Bode plot for our high pass filter. Now, don't take this origin here too literally. Remember that you don't really have a frequency of zero on something like a log plot. You can keep dividing this up and have smaller and smaller frequencies, but you never really get to zero. And although this does equal zero at omega equals zero, we can't really plot that omega equals zero on a log plot anyway. And what's log of any base of zero? Well, that's minus infinity. So you could always keep adding sections to your plot and have this line go into the basement and then into the depths of the earth, but that doesn't tell you much beyond a certain point. The transfer function shown here is what's called a shelving filter. And as before, KDC is the frequency response at omega equals zero but don't take my word for it. I need to prove that to you. So now we have a pole and a zero, both not at the origin. And if I were to take the numerator and the denominator of this form and multiply both of them by omega p and omega z, I can wind up writing it in this kind of style. And here you can see that the pole is at minus omega p and the zero is at minus omega z. But notice I now have this little factor in front, and that's going to become important in a second. So what if I plug in the zero frequency? Well, this term goes away, and this term goes away, and I obviously just have a result of KDC. So that name was justified. Now, if I let omega go to infinity, then if I look at this factor here, well, if I plug in j omega for s, and I let omega go to infinity in the numerator and the denominator, eventually these constant terms get swamped. So I have something like j omega over j omega, and that's going to go to 1 as omega goes to infinity. So I'm just left with this factor that's here in front. So you could be justified in calling this k infinity after the fact. So what the Bode plot looks like depends on which frequency is higher. So if the pole frequency is lower than the zero frequency, then we wind up with the low frequencies passing through very well and the high frequencies not passing through as well in comparison. Whereas if the pole frequency is larger than the zero frequency, then high frequencies pass through well and lower frequencies tend to be relatively attenuated.
In Marshall's notes, he calls the kind of function on the left a low shelf and the kind of function on the right a high shelf, but this terminology isn't necessarily universal. Now, there's a lot more we could say about filter functions and Bode plots, but I'm largely assuming that you've seen this material before in a class like EC 2040, and really I just wanted to review a little bit of this material just enough to be able to effectively talk about some of the one transistor amplifiers we talked about and look at the effect of the capacitors in those circuits on their frequency response.